Not really. <laughs> uh, how did you get off such a hot start, and what what did you see block wise, point wise, offensive and defensive? Um, I just feeling it out like I normally do. Was just trying to see what was going on and just just was feeling it out. I don't, I wasn't really thinking that much stuff. I don't really like to think that much. I just kind of just do do what's up, do whatever. I guess Jerry just kind of going off of that. I mean, it feels like you've been in that zone all year where just when you're in that zone blocking shots, it just they find you or you find them. Like, was that one on Vucevic kind of a statement to kind of just send it to the courtside seats a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. It's better if I just say yes. Cause that sounds that sounds better than whatever I was gonna say. I was just gonna say that I'm just doing doing whatever it takes to get a win. But you know, y'all don't want to hear that, so I'll just yes. <laughs> um, you closed this one in the fourth quarter uh, when you needed it. W- what was the difference here that got you all over the hump late? I think we just made more shots that we had been taking all game. Uh, Locked in on defense a little bit more. We changed some coverages around. I thought our coaches were great today. Um, I mean, they're always, but, I mean, today they just knew exactly what was going on. And, uh, yeah, that was the difference. Um, Jaron, so uh, in that fourth quarter, uh, Taylor said he wanted to start switching more. Did you feel like, you know, just that coverage switch and uh, just the energy that's created through the through the motion just kind of helped you all kind of – find a groove and find some momentum in that fourth quarter. Yeah, it helps if you have the personnel to be able to switch. just keeps the defense in front of you. Um, if they're turning the corner a lot, you kind of want to go to that and have the personnel out there to make that happen. So I, it was good timing. That was a good, good uh, play by Coach, Coach Tay right there. Hey, Jaron, in, in the, t- today's NBA, it's hard enough to keep a team under 100 points. You guys kept them under 90 points. You did it from first quarter and fourth quarter. How did you were you able to, to contain them offensively like that? Uh, well, got DB back after a game, so he had fresh legs and he was able to do a lot and scramble and make make people take tough shots, which we usually just ask him to do that pretty much every night, which uh, can take a take a toll on you. But I mean, he's got it, so. Um, sent him out there to do that, and then me, I'm in the back line, so it makes it difficult. We have good shifts, and everybody's on the same page, moving on a string. Uh, it's really that's the biggest key. Everyone has to know what everyone else is doing and their tendencies and and stuff like. And then BC down the stretch was just perfect with his defense. So that was that was great. Speaking of DB, um, obviously he's had a bit of a struggle this month. How do you guys just try to the past since January? I mean, how do you guys try to keep his spirits? Because obviously he hit that big shot during that run, but Mm -hmm. how do you kind of keep his spirits up when obviously he obviously wants to make those shots, do the right things, but it's just not falling. So how do you guys try to keep his, 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 keeping the spirits up right now? Uh, I mean, our spirits are always up. It it just, we know it's just a flow of a long season. It's a flow of a year. He's, he's not new to this. He's, a veteran in this league. He's been in this league for a long time, improving himself in many different ways. You fall into any sort of slump, you already know how to find yourself back. It, it's simple. All, all, you know, simple. He knows exactly what he's doing. You had two big plays late in the game, both at the low post. I think back-to-back possessions. You found Ja cutting, and then you scored on the double, I think, the next time down. Taylor talked before the game about half-court offense, improving that, being a real team focus. Is trying to get more expo- ex- exploit, you know, you in the post and exploit that post play more in the half court. Something the team is starting to focus on more. Mm, yeah, we're uh, it just leads to double teams if they feel like it worked first time. They might double the next time. Then more people are open. Just another play we can do to mix it up. Um, that and a lot of ball screens with uh, with uh, with <laughs> with twelve. You know it. Just opens up a lot of things. We have a lot of different different play calls. A lot of different players can do a lot of things. Just more mixing it up a, more and more just creates a lot of indecision for a defense. As a team, do you think you'll know when you're out of this sort of rut for good, or will you have will it just be a feeling, or the games will pile up? I, I mean, how do you know, you know, when you're when you're finally out of a bad stretch of basketball? 
Oh, I mean, I wouldn't call it a rut. It's just, it's just part of the season. Um, if if you if you think of it as a rut, then that's not that's not the mentality of the season. You know, there's so so many games, and I think uh, you know, for I'll probably give advice to like younger players if. You know, you're in high school, you're in college, you, you play less games, it, it hits harder, you have more days in between games, you're thinking about chasing your dream, going to the league, you're thinking about a bunch of things. That you, like, you haven't had people talking about you online all the time, you haven't had people talking about you in games, it's not as hostile of environments, it's not real life as much. You're with your mom and your dad, you're, you're hopefully, you know, you have a lot of people around you supporting you, hopefully, not everybody has that, but you age you hopefully you get a chance to play high college basketball and then you get a little bit more of a taste of what it is but those games are spaced out week to week it's not you know they hit they hit harder you have you're fortunate enough to get to the nba you have a game every day or every other day there is no time to get excited or feel bad about a win or a loss there's no need the greatest teams never did that the teams that aren't great do that. So, damn. Um, Taylor mentioned you guys are, he told you guys to embrace the adversity in the fourth quarter, and you guys obviously have had a lot of going on the last few days or so. How have you tried to just take that model on embracing what this latest wave of adversity has been? Um, what do we see in adversity? Um, I would say it's not doing anything different than we normally do. You don't change your habits just because of the result. You do exactly what you've been doing. If if it doesn't, if the result isn't what you want, it doesn't it, you review your habits and you check to see if there's things you can change. But if you know your approach is the right approach, you continue on doing it, knowing that the tide will change. Simple. All right, good stuff. Let's go.